everyone, and welcome back to the Star Wars Stuff Podcast. My name is David. I'm Retro Ray. <laughs> I'm Zach. And I'm Colin. I'm sorry, but it was so funny. <laughs> like, I, like, like just right before we were talking, Ray, to me, Ray was about to get in, into this deep, like, kind of conversation, and he was about to talk, and then David just cut it off and <laughs> was, was like, like, Star Wars Stuff Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta capture the magic for the people. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, man. this is where we talk about all stuff Star Wars. And yeah, there's a lot of news that kind of dropped, uh, a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, the big news that just dropped right before the podcast. Blue Milk is back. Oh, man. Let's go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that later, but the big oh. news <laughs> is that we got this alert all over social media. Yes. Mark your calendar, Star Wars fans, Star Wars Celebration tickets launch in May. Tickets will go on sale on Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time uh, yes. slash Friday, May 3rd, 8 a.m. Japan time. So we all know it's going to take place in Japan. It's going to take place in a city called Makuhari Mesa. Uh, fans of all ages from across the world will come together to celebrate the cultural phenomenon Star Wars. Make celebration your next incredible vacation and create memories in a galaxy far, far away. Get ready for major announcements, immersive exhibits, and interactive show floor screenings, exclusive merchandise, celebrity guests, panels, autograph sessions, fan-inspired activities, costumes, and other surprises coming soon. There's a second part to this I'll read as well with the key art. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Hit the like button. So we are proud to unveil the key art for the Star Wars Celebration Japan. It's a Vader. If you're listening to us on audio, it's Vader. It's essentially the Japanese flag with some TIE fighters in the background and Mount Fuji in the middle of the red dot on the Japanese flag there. And I think there's actually uh yeah, it's, it's, it looks good. Um, the rest of this says, uh, the key art 2025 features a looming presence of Vader accompanied by beautiful cherry blossoms, which is also going to be a big theme. I think on a, a lot of people's merch, uh, sweeping ink strokes, X wings, tie fighters and Imperial ATATs or ad ats, whatever you want to say, uh, feature prominently in the foreground while the rising sun Mount Fuji contained within the uh, complete sustaining piece. There will be limited pre-sale for 2023 Jedi Master VIP ticket purchasers to have first access to Jedi Master VIP tickets for Japan 2025. The VIP pre-sale will take place Wednesday, May 1st at 12 p.m. That's if you already had purchased VIP tickets in the past. Yeah. And there will be Jedi Master VIP tickets available during both the pre-sale and general on-sale, but if you've been listening to our podcast, everyone knows that the Jedi Master VIP sell out in nanoseconds. Yeah. So I don't like how they changed it again, shocker, that <laughs> that of where they, you know, are now giving the people who have bought, you know, tickets in the past to now they have this opportunity, I say privilege, um, uh, to go and get these tickets, you know, potentially before everyone else. Again, it's just like I the... I think it's uh, actually been like that in the past. In the past couple of celebrations, they've done really? that. I, yeah, I, VIP, I don't remember them advertising it like that. I don't think they advertised it as oh, in front okay. as they're doing okay. right now. But that's yeah, I think that's been then. the case. And I think okay. the people that have been VIPs have continued to be VIPs. So it's kind mm. of hard to kind of get in that loop. But um, it's a click, guys. Hopefully, no, hopefully, is. hopefully this year, this will be David and mine's year. This is the year that David and I are getting VIPs. This is it. This is the one. Yeah. Ho- <laughs> I mean, yeah, hopefully. Oh, I mean, that Jeez. all kind of works out maybe. But if you go to the Star Wars Celebration site, they actually dropped the pricing. They did. Which they didn't share with you on social media. So if you yeah. can see my screen right now. It's a $993.25 ticket yep. for all three days of celebration, April 18th through the 20th in the year 2025 next year. And or does you can that do include, th- David? Through, well, it includes everything. I mean, you don't have to wait in lines. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yep. think you get like a gift bag. Uh, you get to go to all the panels. There's no lottery shenanigans. Um, or the three-day adult, which is $168.85. And that's just the basic general admission. There's a three-day kids for 42, 35, yeah. ages 6 through 12. So so something else as well that uh, that uh, m- 
probably the Disney fans will know this, but Disneyland over in Japan is around sixty dollars. I, I I believe of 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 just like a one park day ticket, which isn't bad at all. So um, no. I would definitely look into that. And they do have star tours over there as well. So that's that's pretty cool. So um, nice. Yeah, it's kind of like San Diego to a certain extent. They do the same thing as well. So like with if you're you always get the four day event pass at the end of the convention, they'll tell you, oh, do you want to sign up again for next year where you get like kind of early access to a certain extent? So it's kind of the same premise. And then you have your choices of the lower end tier which is different. Yeah, so I just put up a map on screen from Google, and it shows you the route from the airport, and it goes through, if you look at the very middle, there is uh, Tokyo Disneyland. So it's in the middle between your your travel between the airport and the actual convention center, which is uh, Makuhari Mesa. There you go. go. I'm surprised they don't have a ferry that goes directly right across. They probably do. It's it's only a forty minute drive. I mean, that's I think there's potential for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think it, I there has to. I think somebody told me there is a train system to go from the airport directly to the convention center. Mm. Not sure, but yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so Dave, Dave is driving. If we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to be driving this time around. And David knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think we're really going to be driving. I mean, not that many people drive in Japan. Yeah, um, I know. I was just being... it... oh, Okay, yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I don't think I don't think we'll be driving on this trip. But um, uh, but I right now for our podcast, I know it's going to be me, David, Josh. We're getting James to go because I know this was something high on his list. And then Ray, James lives the like, closest. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Uh, and then Ray, you <laughs> you said you're potentially going. Yeah, I have to apply for a freaking uh, passport. I don't uh, have okay. a passport, so I have yeah. to get that first before I can f- officially say I can try to go. So, well, so you're saying there's you're a chance they might deny you? Is that <laughs> what you're saying? <laughs> no, it's that I don't have a passport. I've never applied for one. Oh, well, I mean, never... if, well, I mean, it's not a big deal to me. It's like getting no. a driver's license. No, it just takes about three months. Yeah, uh, David and I weren't the smartest, and we kind of waited until the last <laughs> minute to to get ours. I think I got my passport maybe like two and a half weeks before we were supposed to go to London, and I think David got yours like just like just before, right? Well, they told me three wait three months, and I waited yeah. right until that time, so I was really Jeez. worried. But I think I got it two <laughs> two two weeks Dude. before, maybe a it month. Was so I can't remember. Terrifying, man. I don't I care remember, it worked out, so yeah. I, I wiped that from yeah. my brain. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I just so- remember David and I were just like, okay, well, if our passports come in time, they come in time. If they don't, they don't. But me, I was dying inside. I was like, I have to go. I, I, I really have to go to London. So I was so pumped. It, 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 and that celebration was fantastic. And it was our first time ever leaving the country. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah. going overseas. I've been to oh, oh, overseas. overseas. <laughs> yeah. So did you dress up, sense. Colin, while you're up there at all in cosplay or no? I, I was supposed to get my Narkina prison suit, um, yeah. but my suit didn't come in time. I've already ranted yeah. about that a while ago, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, uh, but <laughs> hey, uh, I got big plans for this celebration. So OK, so, so what, what do you think the airport would do if if we let's say we were to all go? Yes. And we got those prisons outfits and we actually wore them to the airport <laughs> to get on the plane. <laughs> what do you think they I would mean, do? <laughs> that's I mean that's that's packing light, but at the same time it's just like they let like, these guys have passports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just I mean, I don't know. I mean, it would be funny. I think a lot of the Star Wars fans going you know, to all the airports would be like, I know exactly what that is. And then all the normal people would walk by and be like, I'm 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 gonna call the cops. I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> yeah. Well, Ray, but, yeah. it's funny that you mentioned that because there's precedence for this. So back in the day, I guess around Force Awakens time, I think Colin bought the Poe Dameron helmet and he was like, There's no way to pack it in my luggage. So I told <laughs> yes. him just wear it on the plane. <laughs> yes. 
And I and, and I ended up doing that. And that was also the same weekend that I won the giant four foot porg at um at, <laughs> Target Sports Friday. Yeah. Yes. So wow. that was a that was a really interesting uh plane <laughs> ride because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know if they were like, no, you can't take this, but I just remember convincing people at the airport because I was scared that that pork was going to be stolen. Yeah. I convinced people that it was a new species that was discovered of where it was a mixture of a penguin and a seal. And people actually bought that story. <laughs> so, oh, man. Uh, yeah. So, But yeah. in reality, you had to tell them that was like your emotional support <laughs> pet or something. Or yeah. Helmet. And they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It, I mean, hey, it, 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 it worked out. It was great. Hey, I remember what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it was fun. It, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I cannot wait until this year's celebration. Yeah. Hopefully, the next one will be back in the States. Um, it has to I'm be because it's the too. 50th yeah. anniversary of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I think the big one that I'm hoping for, um, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully soon it will come back to Orlando. Just everything going on over there. I won't get into it that much, but with everything over there, it was kind of skipped. So mm. um, it probably should have been in Orlando earlier, but you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, the next one will be Orlando, or you know, it could be in Texas. It could be back in Chicago. It could be How about Michigan. Make it easy for us. I don't <laughs> I think. Mean, I, I. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath of it being in Detroit. I mean, I guess there is. No, some it won't stars. be. Let's play the convenience I, card, though. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there is some Star Wars connections, I guess, from Michigan, because I think a couple of people like who have been in Star Wars are from Michigan. So sure, sure. You know. Carl Weathers. Yep. Mm. There's always yeah. that 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 opportunity. So, you know, who knows? But I think yeah. Chicago, I wouldn't complain because I've got so oh, many connections yeah, in, in Chicago. And I remember back in 2019, I told David and and uh, we figured that out. And that trip was probably one of my favorite celebrations like a, a besides 2017 but yeah star wars celebration is a blast if you guys haven't gone yet go japan you know if you ever wanted to you know go and 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 visit a beautiful country go and do that and then you know have celebration there but star wars celebration is fantastic and it's just such a wonderful opportunity if you're a star wars fan so for chicago where was it held in chicago it was over at the mccormick place yeah okay okay yeah because yeah, i went to wizard world one time and there was like a right across the convention center there's like a big hotel and then there's like a steak joint dude i haven't eaten a steak that good no. i haven't found one that good compared to that we place. Like, we went to shirt to a chicago pizza place and we had like a big argument um, well, 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 not David and I, it was Craig and, and, and it was James. And I don't think we fully remember what the actual like debate was, but I just remember the last sitting. Day, oh, okay. Well, well, <laughs> brings everyone together. The, yeah. Sitting at the table. I just remember just of, of them getting in a heated debate and I'm just eating my pizza and I look up at David and David's just like, Oh yeah. So no, I was enjoying it. It was fun. It was cool. <laughs> because James James and Joseph hadn't met Craig yet. So that was yes. like the first time meeting. And then Corn Craig muffins is like in the morning. On one side of, of the debate of The Last Jedi and James and Joseph on, on totally other. So that was so fun. It was interesting to see them go back and forth. So mm. yeah, yeah, James that says was it was delicious pizza. <laughs> <laughs> James, why don't you hop on? And we yeah, can talk about come on. on. Come on. Uh, but yeah, so that is, a that was a, you know, a super fun announcement. Um, the other big one that I think all of us are excited for is that not only is the Phantom Menace coming to theaters, but the Skywalker saga is coming back to theaters, um, which is, you know, extremely exciting, especially for those who haven't had the opportunity of seeing, um, all the other films, uh, in theaters. Uh, yeah. like I'm kind of looking at Zach because he's the youngest person here. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but seeing, uh, seeing all these films on the big screen again, uh, is just going to be fantastic. Um, and I think right before Ray was asking us of like, of, um, of, of what movies, like of all the star Wars films that we have seen mm. in theaters, um, 
I have seen all nine in theaters. I know David has. Ray, you were about to say it, and then like, you know, <laughs> we started the podcast so we can actually yes. officially talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So no, so I, I I saw all of them in theaters, um, except for the first one, New Hope. I saw that one first time in VHS, and okay. then when they did the remastered, I got to see it in theaters. But Empire Strikes Back: Return of the Jedi, I got to see them. You know, when they came out on the weekends, they came out. Oh, nice. So it it and actually tell you the truth, it was funny because that theater still here in San Antonio where I first saw those two movies, which is crazy. Which theater? Uh, Northwest 14, Santicos, off of I-10. It's a small theater. It's not, I mean, it's not that big. I mean, it, uh-huh. it's old school. They had re, re, redid it a while back, but it's old, man. Uh, and, Interesting. Yeah. All right. But that's so, why yeah, I saw what- my first two. What Colin was talking about was there is going to be a new marathon, and there is an article off of Star Wars News Net. I'm going to read it here. Um, yeah. All nine Star Wars saga films coming to theaters on May the 4th. A new look at the Acolyte as well tied to the Phantom Menace screenings. So StarWars.com has confirmed that an exclusive look at the Acolyte will play after the Phantom Menace during its May re-release. Uh, they also said that tickets will go on sale Friday, March 22nd which is this Friday, at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern. They have also confirmed of rumors of a theatrical re-release of all nine Skywalker Saga films, though the preview for the Acolyte will only be tied to the Phantom Menace screenings. It will happen on Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow. So that is it for that article. So yeah, I'm probably going to try and do that. May 4th is going to be what? That Saturday? Yeah. So, so, what theater are we doing? What theater do you think we're going to go to, David? Well, it depends on what theater showing it. <laughs> yes, that's the thing that is kind of confusing. Be, uh, be, be because the article didn't officially say it's going to be an AMC or um, uh, or uh, celebration c- celebration cinema here and in, uh, in in Michigan. It's just they just said it's back in theaters. So, I guess check. I guess the I guess the best advice that I can probably give everyone is check your th- movie theater websites first thing in the morning. Tickets will be going on sale at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So on the you know on the time frame that it says in the website, just get there kind of early on the websites. Just kind of browse and kind of check and search yeah. Star Wars. Um, uh, I know Zach and I are going to our theaters here in person. Um, uh, which most theaters are, are, are okay with, especially AMC. Um, s- fun, fun fact about that. You can actually sometimes you can get there a day early and, and get the tickets a day early before the tickets actually go on sale. Um, uh, because we did that for Thor. We, we did that for the new Spider-Man, um, because the tickets weren't actually going on sale on Thursday, uh, and, like, unless they were online. But if you went that Wednesday, you walked in the day before you could do it in person. So that's awesome. That's, so that's kind of a theater hack, but they're not doing that for, for our theater in, 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 in Michigan, but most AMCs do that because we used to do that at Disney Springs all the time. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, I remember so when the- servers went down for the force awakens Yeah, and yeah. I think infinity war people mm. just ended up walking to the box office and getting their tickets that way. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Which Spider Man was a big crash too. Oh yeah. yeah. If you live close, no yeah, home. that's that's the move. But I mean, if you if you live far away from your chosen yeah. theater, you're kind of stuck. But yeah. So when yeah, I, could... so when I used to work at the comic book stores, all the employees we would one person would go and buy ten to twelve tickets. Oh and yeah. You would, yeah, at one hit. Like this was pre, where you're able to pick your seats. So it was kind of like you had to stand in line, get there early if you wanted to get yeah. good seats. I love the picking the seats now because that's way better. Yeah, my coworker was talking to me today at work because I'm like, dude, Phantom Menace sale, or you know, tickets are about to go on sale, and he's like, dude, I did that back in 1999 when we had to wait to get a wristband to get in line to buy tickets. I'm like, geez, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> and then you get to the theater hours ahead of time and wait to get in. Part of me wishes I had that experience, but no, I'm you also don't. thankful <laughs> for the convenience of technology today. But 
Yeah, that experience is kind of one of those, like, you look fondly back on it, but, like, now, I think for me and Ray, <laughs> especially being older, we, do, we don't want to stay up till midnight and then have yeah. to watch the movie and then go to work <laughs> the next day and yeah. then wait in line, stand up, <laughs> or sit down yeah. on, like, the sidewalk or the street. Yeah, it's it's not... Yeah. It's not the best when you're older, I, I don't think, so... <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we have those memories, though. So Yeah, hey, but definitely. we're close to getting senior citizens discount though <laughs> so that we got to get out forward here to. come out <laughs> no, I'm uh, so yeah continuing with uh, that bit of news on the marathon which i hope we can all attend and everyone listening and watching can all attend that and have a good time so the phantom menace is going to be re-released and it's going to come out in 4k and actually there's a continuation of that article that i was reading here um it states uh, from StarWarsNewsNet.com, not 12 hours have passed since the first trailer of uh, for the Acolyte hit online, and we're already thinking about the next one. After online rumors and plenty of speculation, AMC Theaters has confirmed that a new look at the Leslie Headland series will be tied to the re-release of The Phantom Menace on May 3rd through the 5th. Uh, there's a statement that says, after the feature, so after The Phantom yeah. Menace, fans will get a special first look at the Star Wars the Acolyte series coming to Disney Plus June 2024. And I don't oh, think no. they've they have said... The whole movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think they've said exactly what we're going to see and how long the footage is, but there's going to be something. Um, the rest of the article states uh, this will happen on the first weekend of May when The Phantom yep. Menace will be re-released in North American theaters uh, to celebrate the film's 25th anniversary. So it will also... Happened one month before the series debuts on Disney Plus, which lines up with the time. We would expect a second trailer. However, descriptions of the special promo seem more in line with that and/or behind-the-scenes footage that played in front of the Rogue One uh, oh, screen yeah. uh, back in 2022. I was about to say that. Yeah. To capitalize on the social media boost acquired by said featurette, Lucasfilm could release another trailer for the show a couple of days later. Additionally, in recent days, there have been some rumors that on the same weekend, Disney will also re-release in 4K all three films, which we all know that's true now, uh, and the prequel trilogy, all in 4K. Uh, this has definitely not been confirmed. It actually has been. This is a little old. It's, this has been updated. But yeah, uh, we're going to get a special look. If, if it's going to be like the Andor special, special look, it's not going to be that much per se. But I think that Andor scene they gave us was kind of interesting. But yes. um, I think even as Star Wars fans, we would probably all attend it and kind of celebrate the Phantom Menace anyways. Yeah, yeah. The They're also giving out a small, uh, like a small poster as well. Kind of like the posters that they give out to um, fans when they go to celebration after a panel. Most of the time they would have like a like a free poster. Oh, it's this poster. For- it probably it it honestly probably will be. I don't know if it's gonna be like the actual like acolyte like kind of thing where it has at the bottom. I, I, I would just yeah. hope it would just be like the classic yeah. Phantom Menace thing, which I think would be super cool. But yeah. um, but yeah, yeah, most likely they'll do the same protocol as they did for Rogue One of where they showed um like a scene from Andor and they actually talked about the show Andor and then they just went and played the movie. But this time it's happening afterwards, so it could be longer uh who knows uh but yeah no i'm i'm definitely excited um because if we get any chance to see you know jar jar banks pot racing and darth maul versus obi-wan and qui Gunjin on the big screen sam me yeah. i'm there 100 yeah, percent. so i'm i'm so excited so i got a question yeah, the lightsaber you... fight alone is is worth the price yeah so i got a question for all of you guys all right so would you watch it in d-box seats d-box seats Ah, uh, well, most theaters don't do D box anymore. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, so I saw the second Hobbit and D box seats, <laughs> and and I remember Smog just, just you know, just running through the mountain, and every time he stepped, like, like your seat would move like that, and I think the funniest <laughs> part was, you know, for all of you know, those fans of Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit movies. Um, uh, there is the dwarf bomber who, uh, who, who ends up in a barrel and he gets on land and he bounces like of that scene where he bounces yeah, up yeah. on the ground. Like our seats would go up and down all <laughs> over the place. And when that was happening and that really kind of like, you know, kind of stuck with me, but, but then shortly after they, 
discontinued the D box seats for the most part. There's not that many theaters that do D box. I mean, yeah, I definitely short lived. Yeah. Well, no, the reason I was asking because yeah. last night we, me and David, got to see Ghostbusters last night, and oh, there was okay. a group of people who actually had the seats and I kind of saw them. Moving. Oh, yeah. So Where I was kind of curious. Were they behind me in front of? Yeah, you? they're they were behind. Okay. They were behind you in front of me. But yeah, in, I in... kind of saw them. It was kind of weird. That's what I was kind of asking. I was like, I'm kind of interested. D-box I would kind of want to watch it. Yeah. Huh. It was a Cinemark huh. Theater. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, not that many theaters have D box seats anymore. So that's th- that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I would definitely see it in D box seats for sure. I've never yeah. seen a movie sitting in D box. Either have I. I haven't either. But mm. I, I don't know if I'd want to see them all mm. in a row in D box. Like, God forbid, <laughs> I need to rest my eyes for 20 minutes. But then, you know. Starfighter takes off and oh you know you're just back into I it. I feel and... like it would be like Star Tours but like 2 hours long. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Uh, Keeps you on yeah. your toes. Yeah. That would be yep. wild. So <laughs> let's talk about the announcement that you know that we've all been waiting for which is uh True Moo the uh yeah. the 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 milk brand um that you know has been doing milk for a long time has a partnership with uh with lucasfilm apparently and they are going to be uh debuting uh their blue milk for i think just that day of where we'll only be in stores or it might be be just until they sell out but either way i am gonna buy a bunch like of just to say like I've, i've got blue milk this is great yeah. It will not be the same as Galaxy's Edge. I got to be very clear on that for all my friends that are big friends of Galaxy's Edge. It's not going to be blue milk from Galaxy's Edge in a carton. It's going to be a carton of milk that's just going to be dyed blue. I don't think it's going to be like a blue berry flavor or anything. It's just going to be that color of blue. But still pretty cool. It's still going to have the Star Wars logo on it, which is cool. There it is. In all of its glory. There it is. Look at so that. Are they, gonna have, are they gonna have lactose free one for us? <laughs> I would hope so because I am uh I am lactose intolerant. So but I was gonna buy some anyways just because you know it's Star Wars, so you have to go buy it. My poor wife. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh that now that's cool. I didn't know it was blueberry milk that they gave you at Galaxy's Edge. That's pretty cool. Uh it's it's not blueberry exactly. I can I can find the ingredients. Um, but it's it it tastes like a slushy. I guess that's kind of like the best way to say it. Like, but in a very, yeah, it, it's yeah. it's a it's slushy and it's fruit based. Nice. Yeah. So oh, it's not okay, actual okay. milk. Yeah. Because you don't want to be yeah. drinking milk and like. <laughs> yeah. Super super. Is this like select 200% retailers? Humidity. I would think so. I could probably see okay. Target doing it and stuff like sure. that. I really don't see it being at Aldi, which would be cool, but I don't yeah. see like, you know, I could see yeah. it at Walmart as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can do the blue milk. I can't do the green milk of Galaxy's Edge just because of that scene from The Last Jedi of where Luke Skywalker <laughs> just <laughs> just wipes his lips and he's like, ugh. And I'm just like, nah, I, 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 I can't do this. I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay, well, there's an article here on IGN that I can read about the blue milk. So oh, please it's entitled please. Star Wars Blue Milk Can Soon Finally Be Consumed at Home, if you're into that. <laughs> uh, Star Wars fans longing for a taste of some mysterious blue milk will soon be able to sip on the galaxy's infamous beverage. In a press release, Lucasfilm released a slate of new products as part of the month-long celebration of Star Wars villainy dubbed Imperial March. The post mentions that Lucasfilm is partnering with the milk brand True Moo to craft the beverage. The Star Wars True Moo Blue Milk by Dairy Farmers of America True Moo is described as a delicious vanilla flavored milk with okay. blue f- food coloring. Okay. Fans can expect to see it on store shelves beginning April 17th. Aside from the fact that you can check for the obvious bottle of blue liquid, you can see an image below of what the packaging will look like, uh, which is on our screen right now. Uh, it's of if you're listening on audio, it's Luke fighting Vader in a kind of a, a cartoon style, uh, animated style. Yeah, Empire. Yeah. 
Fans of the series are all too familiar with the blue milk, a popular beverage found on the Outer Rim, such as the planet Tatooine. The beverage first appeared in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, in a scene where Mark Hamill's Luke Skywalker is seen talking to his Uncle Owen while eating a meal, and you could spot the beverage as a background piece. Funny enough, Hamill would later reveal on Twitter that the blue milk was disgusting. <laughs> Of course, this is not Disney's first time trying to capitalize on one of the Star Wars' most iconic beverages. Those who attend Disneyland or Walt Disney World and head over to the amusement park Star Wars Galaxy's Edge section can get a nice cold glass of blue milk, even though it's not milk. Um, that, however, isn't actually milk, but rather a smoothie that also comes in green color variant, referencing the green milk Skywalker is seen consuming aggressively <laughs> in The Last <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> Oh my goodness. No. So funny <laughs> enough, yeah. So I'm not the biggest fan of The Last Jedi, but I do prefer the green milk over the blue milk in taste. I, can't I would do rather it. Be I the just can't way. do it. No way. We got to run a poll of blue milk or green milk. And I'd imagine most people would pick blue milk, but to me, it makes me think of like melted blue moon ice cream. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. Now I've got a question. Of course, when I decide to stop <laughs> drinking milk, what's that about? <laughs> I mean, hey. We all probably is, get a little gassy. Is a child like a, a toddler? <laughs> like, like, are you just, are, are, are you just saying like, you know what, this is enough. I'm done with it. I'm cutting myself off. Like, uh, <laughs> no I'm thanks. I'm trying to quit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you're listening to us on audio, uh, Voodoo Child Cosplay <laughs> on YouTube made the statement. Of course, when I decided to stop drinking milk. So I myself, so I'm 42 years old. I stopped drinking milk like. 10 15 years ago because i love how we're I, I never this. drank milk out of a glass i would eat cereal so i use sure. cereal with the uh, milk and cereal but i started to notice i would feel weird afterwards and your so, bones are stronger and i and i figured out Ooh. that yeah it was the milk that was making me feel weird so i don't know if i'm the road on the road to being lactose intolerant because i can eat ice cream dude we're all can, lactose intolerant a little bit yeah, I guess. And I mean, we're the only mammals that consume milk after we're not babies. You're, we're yeah. not technically supposed to be consuming milk. Well, and it's another animal's like, right. You know what I mean? Like our bodies aren't made to digest that <laughs> Science, perfectly, yeah. you yeah. know, but I'm not going to let a couple toots stop me from enjoying some blue milk. Guys. It's going to be real. <laughs> all right, okay. Okay. So question guys. Now I got to ask all of you guys. Here we go. So I would have the blue milk with cereal. That's what I'm going to do. It. I don't drink it either. No. Oh, yeah. Of what course. cereal would you be eating with your blue milk? My favorite cereal of all time, and I think it's discontinued. I don't think they sell anymore, or it's very hard to find. <laughs> which is Waffle Crisp. That was the best mm. cereal back in the day. Um, but never they it. discontinued it, and I never had it again. And I I remember it was really really funny. I went to a friend's house and I, th I think it was like five or six years later after they discontinue it. And I saw it in his pantry and I pulled it out. I was like, where did you get this? And he's like, I know a guy. And I was <laughs> like, I don't want to know what that means, but I'm, 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 I'm going to have some of the cereal, but yeah, no, that, uh, so they, as far as I know, they really don't make it anymore. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to search for it. You can buy it off Amazon, I guess, but it's not really in stores, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Sale. Yeah. <laughs> but Waffle Crisp is my favorite cereal. Zach, so, how about you? I'd do Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I think that's a no no brainer for me personally. That's a Same. that's what I got in my pantry right now. And I mean, maybe Captain Crunch, but I don't think it would complement that as well as it would complement some cinnamon toast crunch. In my now, opinion. Now, before you answer, David, before you guys were born. They had R two D two. Oh yeah. Oh no no C three PO cereal back in the day. Okay. And yeah, so if Disney was smart, you would re release that cereal with the blue milk, and boom, you're making money like crazy. Hand over fist. Yeah, I mean that that's a great marketing idea, Ray. I, that would be awesome. Just re release the original packaging. You yes. don't need to like like mm. retro actively create. Some, I mean. Just release the same print on the box. It would do fine. But I was just thinking right now, I don't I don't know if you guys agree with this or if this was weird or what, but I remember as a kid in the 80s, I don't know why we did this, but we would get the Star Wars cereal boxes 
and we would like put them on our because okay. there was different characters we would put them yeah. on our table and for some reason we like taking pictures with them <laughs> and okay. i have a lot of pictures of myself and my family with these star wars i don't know why we did that's that. cool david did so, you eat paint chips when you were a kid <laughs> i don't th- i don't think so i'm but... just kidding that's some tommy boy for those at home who might not know but yeah well so i think people from i mean me specifically probably from from my generation will remember when the phantom menace and i think attack the clones um they they have the lightsaber spoons right dude i got so, one upstairs and an yes. indiana jones one yes <laughs> and those were just fire i miss the prizes and the cereal boxes. I know. Like, oh, yeah. Oh man, it, it was so cool. Be because we had to convince my parents to be like, "Mom, we need six boxes of cereal." And my mom would be like, "Why?" I'm like, "Just do it. Just <laughs> gotta get all. Just the get it. Yep." And we had like the Qui Gon Jinn one. We had the Obi Wan yeah. one. I think we had like Darth Maul one. It, oh, Weren't so they cool. all the same hilt but different colors? Yeah. 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 Ah, see, that's another marketing right there. They could do that and just re-release so those spoons for us oh. grown-ups. Dude, I'm going <laughs> to break out that spoon. It's in my house somewhere. Get that out for some blue milk cereal. Clean that puppy I don't up. know. <laughs> I don't know if it became like a safety issue, like of why they stopped like doing like of, of the prizes and cereal boxes. Because of I, I could see from a business standpoint of, of, of someone getting a box of cereal and then they, they just start eating and then they get the prize like, you know, just they like start eating the prize and you're just like well, yeah. what's going on so well, wasn't I, I mean i packaged separately like you have the bag right and wasn't it usually like underneath and like its own separate bag or was it like in the cereal sometimes but i know there are cases where it was in the actual like yeah. bag of cereal yeah because you'd think the people who manufacture the cereal don't manufacture the <laughs> the stuff know. they give away but you never know. know there's i mean yeah 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 quality so, yeah, control and, see, and also back in the day since they didn't have you could you couldn't go and buy like C3PO's mask and Vader's mask at that yeah. point. They would have it on the cardboard box like David was saying and you would cut it out. Yeah. And then it had like two little holes you poke in the side and you could put it on your face. Uh it's kind of cheesy, but Last do you remember the prize that? that was in those boxes, Ray? Oh man, I'm trying to remember. It wasn't that great. I think it was like stickers or something. Well, see, what I, I remember is it was the tractor beam. That's what I'm pulling from my memory. It was like a two. It was. It almost looked like a syringe without the like skinny part, and you would put it together, and it was the tractor beam. And it's like, why would you put a tractor beam toy? Unless my memory is all foggy, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. It's been, dude. It's been so long, but I haven't remember. But I remember the box. Like t- I can remember it clearly right now yeah. of how it looked. Yeah. You know, it was just blue with the C. You know, uh, C three PO on it and everything like that. But I don't know those are the good old days. That's when, you know, I think they stopped putting toys in the in the boxes it was because it persuaded kids to buy that cereal because of what was inside it, not what the food was. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Money's money, think- dude. <laughs> money's money, man. Yeah, I think that's why I stopped putting toys in the box. <laughs> that's why we don't have it no more. Is it my fault, guys? Did I do it? Damn. No, man. Okay, yeah, so this y'all had to be around for this one. So I'm surprised that Lucas the film didn't do this back in the day. I'm pretty sure this is in Zach and Collins' time frame. <laughs> Gogurt? Oh yeah, yes, yes. 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 Freeze those bad yes. boys. I love the lightsaber Gogurts. I know they had like the Cheetos too of 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 of, <laughs> of, of like c- certain 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 Cheetos <laughs> would be able to change like the color in your mouth so um Ugh. i remember we did this for my birthday party around re <laughs> re avenge of the sith uh and and if someone like got like a blue cheeto they would be on the light side team and then if someone got like like the dark side cheeto and uh they would be on the dark side team and somehow everyone got like an actual like where the teams were equal and we just had a big lightsaber fight in my backyard and i was like nice so Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, man, it was a thing. Yeah, See right there. Like the only reason why I know about Gogurt guys is because my daughter. That's <laughs> all she would freaking eat, dude. And that's yeah. why I know about that. Yeah, we used to freeze them and bring them in our lunch, and they'd be relatively thawed out by the time it was lunchtime, and it kind of keep your lunch cool at, when I was growing up. But for those, I never of you, ate it. is it good? I mean, 
Yeah, it's as good as I. I don't know. It's I. I, I can't it's yogurt, explain right? it, Ray. You did, yeah, it's yogurt with clever marketing, and it, it it worked. But for for those of you guys who are watching us, this is the spoon that nice. Colin and I were talking about. Yeah, this is the the same one that I yeah. got it's somewhere. The batteries are beyond dead, but it's it's somewhere in my house. I got to break that puppy out when the blue milk comes back. Okay, so whoever's out there, because there's 3D printers out there and stuff. <laughs> they need to remake this for us grown-ups that we could change the batteries out and we can actually use it to eat with. If yeah. That, that's money in the bank right there. Whoever can make that for adults, boom, you're making money. Yeah, for sure. And I know the the spoon blade thing was Disconnected. detachable. Yeah. yeah. And all that good yeah, stuff. So, yeah, so. so you wash that piece and not wash the electronics. Yeah, you wash it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. All right, so if everyone watched and listened to our previous podcast about the Acolyte, we were going through the trailer. I know uh, Retro Ray and I did a, a Patreon-only episode of going through the Acolyte trailer, and um, no one could figure out exactly what species Daphne Keen was playing. And apparently oh, yeah. she is a species that we're all familiar with, and we just kind of forgot because of all the Star Wars info that we have. Uh, cascading through our minds there. Um, she is actually this species here to the left. It's it's that uh, dancer from Return of the Jedi where Boba mm. Fett oh, dang. puts his hand on her chin and, and walks by. Yeah, That's the same species. They're called Thelans. Thelans. And somebody uh, made a post that I'll put up here about that fact. Uh, Daphne Keene is playing a Thelan human hybrid named Jackie Lon. In the acolyte, hmm. uh, she's okay. also known for playing Laura X twenty three and Logan is rumored to uh, be returning for Deadpool and Wolverine. And there you can see yeah. a picture. So she's definitely a lot older now. Where did that information actually come from? Like, is this just a guess, or does or did this actually come from from the Star Wars page and stuff? No, it's not from the Star Wars page, but I mean, it's pretty. I mean, it's it looks like the same species, so it's pretty right on and the whole like thelan human hybrid thing if yeah. you go to Wiki, uh, wikipedia all thelans are hybrids of humans it's kind of weird sure. so okay all right that, yeah so we see one in the clone question. wars don't we mm. i'm pretty sure there's a thelan that works with uh dengar on the train um with the train yeah we've ice. seen them before in other spots it's just that they've never been in the forefront so this is gonna yeah. be the first time that she we had actually like get... a weird like whip type chain thing. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, 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 yep. I yeah. I, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking yeah. about. I can't remember her name, but maybe we'll see her in the Bad Batch. I don't know. So, a hey, quick question: Y'all haven't bought up what went down today in New York, though. The Imperial March, because <laughs> <laughs> do you not get it? Because you know, it's uh -huh. imperial. Nice. Yeah. That was the actual advertisement. I'm disappointed. In all three of you right now, dog. That, I was. I, I mean, was, was on, it, under is a it worth talking about on the podcast though? Yeah, dude. <laughs> freaking thing was down down in New York and up yep. in the State Building. Oh. They had a yep. big ceremony up there and everything. Dang. Yep. They. That's where they had announced uh, like a bunch of different things and uh, in including like, you know, some of the new Lego stuff going on. Funko Pops. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That it, they use for the advertisement. It was nice. Yes. Hence the joke. Imperial March, which the three of you didn't get. And I'm I got it. it. I got I'm it. Sorry. You didn't laugh, Ray. You didn't oh, laugh. I, I, well, I didn't get it. What's, what's the joke? Because it's March the Madness. month of March, uh, and then Imperial. Yeah. So they just they don't the say Imperial February. February. Yes, Imperial March. <laughs> Sorry, David. That's, that's <laughs> horrible. Oh my god! <laughs> Get out of here! I think it is way. Not Shred Imperial over. February or Imperial April, but <laughs> Imperial March. Like May the Fourth be with you. Uh, May the right. I'm trying. David, David. That's not really no. a joke more than it's just like word <laughs> It's a play. good play on words, man. <laughs> it is a good play on words. That's why I'm surprised that they've never done it before. I was like, oh, that's clever. I'm surprised. That is that a little they've surprising that. they've done that before. Yeah. And I mean, okay. Empire State Building, Imperial. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Okay. I liked it because he was he posted with Vader and stuff, and then he was yeah. at the top of the building, and he was kind of in there like a black trench coat kind of looking. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. He had the high ground. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nice. That's yeah. sweet. I'm guessing that that the that the stormtroopers there were probably members of the five hundred first. So mm. good for them. Um, if that's the case. I bet they had a, a, a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful pictures. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's fun. All right. Well, moving on. Um, <laughs> Imperial March. Any I can't more snack it. themes? Uh, no I'm snack not... themes per se, but uh, <laughs> there is an article that I do want to touch on about the Acolyte. So this actually did drop, and I don't think a lot of people spoke about it. Um, but it's a conversation, I believe, with Leslie Headland, who is the showrunner for The Acolyte. And she directed, I know, the first... She directed and wrote the first episode for sure. And she says in this article, whatever you think The Acolyte is, it's not. Star Wars series creator Leslie Headland reveals in the first teaser trailer. Uh, the showrunner behind the Star Wars original series, debuting June 4th on Disney+, Plus, talks about her... Imp- film influences and a love of legends lore yes um and this is I actually like Kristen baver yeah. yeah um she actually did quote more about that uh which um she said there's some eu lore that i decided to put in because i thought it was so cool and no one told me i couldn't uh there are a couple of b- really big eu ideas ideas that are utilized both early on in the series and later in the series nice. um so you know there could be a flashback to uh darth raven as um you know which has been fan casted to be keon your reeves you know i would love that i could see them doing a flashback like maybe they have an old sith holocron and then he's in there or something like that like who knows but there's always the opportunity of of bringing legends into Star Wars. It's just they have to do it in the right way. And having it in flashbacks or Sith visions or something or holocron yeah. would be awesome. So bring it on. Let's go. Is Force Justice Legends? Is that how you say it? Is that the like? I'm trying to remember. It's like light side force lightning. Is that what it's called? Force. Oh, Justice? oh, yes, yes. Um, so it 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 was canon that. That was uh that was an ability that Plo Koon could do actually. Yeah, I couldn't um, remember but, if it was Legends or not, but okay. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's canon just because we haven't seen it yet, and I don't sure. think in any of the books someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I believe yeah. it's still Legends. Cool. Maybe yeah. we'll see that. Yeah, maybe. that'd be sweet. Yeah, and speaking of Plo Koon, oh, uh, Colin thinks that's not Plo Koon. <laughs> yeah theory. yeah i'm i'm just gonna be very brief i i love the theory don't get me wrong i would love you know how how cool would it be if james arnold taylor came in because he voiced him in the clone wars how cool would it be if he was the person wearing the suit and then he actually got to you know play him on set don't get me wrong i'm not saying it's a you know it's cool. a terrible theory i love that theory but there are other jedi in yeah. that era that are his species. He is not the only mm-hmm. Keldor out there. There are other Keldor out there that are Jedi. So yeah. I would love it for, for it to be Plo Koon, but I don't want to just c- to confirm that's Plo Koon because of I don't want to get my hopes up. And I don't, I, mm-hmm. I don't want other people to get their hopes up, but it would be very, very cool if it was. What if they dressed up Dave Filoni in that species? Like, that'd be sick. That'd be so cool. I, like a stealth cameo we find out right. about later, way later. Right. So the only the other theory that I have is that if Plo Koon was going to show up, it would be a project that Dave Filoni was working directly on just mm. because of that's his favorite Jedi and that and Plo Koon has a lot to do with, with the wolf pack and stuff. So it would make sense if, if Plo Koon were to show up that it would be a project that Dave Filoni was directly working on. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Well, yeah. yeah, from this article also, there's something interesting that uh, Leslie Headland does say. She states, which is a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but um, I mean, it's on the website. She says that Vernestra Rowe is the only character 
from the High Republic, other media like books and comic books that's yeah. going to appear. But she says, hopefully, spoiler for maybe if we do season two, she'll probably add more of the existing characters. And I think a lot of people are thinking um, it's going to be probably some of the main characters from the Light of the Jedi that might have. That would be amazing. Avar Chris, I believe. That is probably yeah. So she's great. Um, there, our man. I mean, yes. Uh, would he be old enough? Like, like of him, Bell, Wreath. There are so many great like Jedi characters there that I would love to see. And then you, you, you also have to remember there's Yoda, Yaddle, uh, Yero Poof, Hopo Rancisis. Um, there's like a lot of Jedi that we actually know that are alive around this point. But the yeah. question is, are we actually going to see them? Terra um, Sanube. Yep. Uh, with with um, with like Wreath and um, and Bell and those characters, they were humanoid. So I don't know if they would be alive around that time. Yeah. Um, but only time will tell. But I would love to see that. Uh, and again, if you haven't read the books or listened to them in Audible, give them a shot. Like they're really good. I'm really into all the stories. Like they're it's it's fantastic. And then I also have the Star Wars High Republic character encyclopedia. That's helped me a lot to like understand like of the characters and, and give me more of a visual. So I would definitely get that book as well. But yeah. The High Republic is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So how many books have you read from the High Republic and which ones, Colin? I'm on the fourth one right now, like in in chronological order. So I've read, um, well, listened to because not, it's not audible. So uh, Light of the Jedi, Into the Darkness, and then the third one. Give me one second. I should know this. Sorry. Sorry, is, guys. Uh, Into the Darkness, is that the one that features a young Vernestra Rowe? Because I remember there's a green skin character on the cover. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, question. yeah. So, a lot of the Jedi and and uh, uh, into the dark, and then the rising storm, and then the one I'm currently on is the fallen star. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, which character was that? Gabriel Luna say he wanted to play. I was just going to bring that up. Um, Elzar Man, the character that Zach just mentioned. So, oh, yeah, God. we we got to speak with Gabriel Luna at Dallas Fan Expo. And he's really into the High Republic, really into being in Star Wars. And, of course, it's really good. He played he played uh, he was the he was the last, I think, iteration of the Terminator yeah. in uh, the last Terminator film. He was also Ghost yeah. Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yeah. Yep. And um yeah. He's also uh, Tommy, uh, Pedro Pascal's brother in The Last of Us. Oh, that's yeah. the same guy's ghostwriting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, never yeah. put that together. Yeah, and he's there's some of, yeah. our area. He he went to school in Austin. I know. I'm not sure what town he's from, but he is a that's sound sweet. Director. Yeah, he's a big wrestling yeah. fan too. And yeah, I uh, you know fun fun fact here. I actually just watched the first two Terminator movies for the first time. And then I've I haven't continued because the timelines are very confusing, apparently. So I'm just trying to figure that out. Um, I'm not sure if we have any Terminator fans, but apparently you're better than yeah. me. I'm, that's on my list. I was um, texting James today. I'm like, I need a list of movies yeah, to watch. Yes, you do. Dude, you he honestly, sent me. He sent me quite the list. Holy well, God, yeah, I haven't read it. Because I feel like for you, it's going to be like Steve Rogers as as soon as he comes back from being frozen and then he's got like yeah. that, that small notebook, but like that's 10 times you. longer. Yes. Yeah. You uncultured Bantha. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> My personality is a mix of some shows I like and star Wars. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> now uh, Terminator one and two are my favorites. Um, yeah. It's just after have... that, the timeline just gets confusing. And I guess okay. there's a TV show, too, called the Sarah, Sarah Connor. It doesn't Chronicles. feel like it's that confusing, Colin. That's interesting. That one was good. Sarah Connor was good, though. There just... is three timelines, David. There's, like, three timelines. Like, it's all the that, same like, timeline. 
No, it's not. No, it's not. I even got, I, I pulled up pictures just to make sure I talked to Josh of like, so apparently after the third movie, um, no, I'm sorry. Salvation? Apparently, I, I, apparently after the second movie, um, uh, after, after that, there's like three timelines that like kind of stray away. So with, mm -hmm. um, the final one that, that came out in 2019, you could count that as like a direct sequel to the second movie. But yeah. the other ones are are like alternate timelines. Though, well, I say ultimate time. It was basically them trying to make the movie again, but yeah, they were kind of. It was an ultimate time. It's supposed Steve? to be the same timeline, but it's just they were doing a different spin on the story. It it's not like a like soft a reboot, kind of. It was yeah. kind of like a soft reboot. Yeah, I, I guess it's really not that confusing. Flash if you prequel. kind of grew up with it, <laughs> and you kind of understand the base of what well, it was kind of. Like the, I don't know, what's Marvel doing? The multiverse concept? Like if we could track with the multiverse stuff going on, right? Okay. Would Terminator so, be like. Right. So easy? that's that's different though because of that's more clear. Um, I, I would maybe compare this more to yeah. the to the whole X-Men reboot thing. Oh, yeah. With like Days of Future Past because of yeah. they just re-like booted it and then, you know, and, and then an alternate timeline like came through. And that's yeah, like so, so like Terminator Salvation, the one that you're talking about, is where yeah. it has Batman. That's supposed to be kind what? of like the the guy who played Batman. <laughs> okay, uh, I was like, hold on a second. There's no, no way. Uh, I forgot his name. What's his name, David? Michael Keaton? No. Christian Bale. Name. Val Kilmer. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Dog, yeah. Adam you could have had me so good on that <laughs> live on the internet. Dude. Woo. Thanks, Ray. Terminator Christian and Bale. Batman together. No. Um, Man. Uh, how right, did I so not know about that? okay, not so, to get that confused with Terminator versus Robocop, the video right. game. Yeah, so <laughs> what's the next movie I'm supposed to watch then? Is it so, Salvation or is it the third movie? So, the third movie was supposed to be the continuation of that part two, okay, but it's of course him later in life and them sending another Terminator back to kill him, right? Um, but it's, of course, what they're doing is they're sending them back to kill his soldiers. That he helps helps him build okay. a, I guess not rebellion, but uh, the group that survives okay. or whatever, and that's what that one was supposed to be. And that one was great. I, I like that one too. It's just after that one, they wanted to do the, the kind of reboot slash prequel, and then they did that yes. one. That's where that one came in. And then after that one, they did the other one with the Game of Thrones actress, where yes. it was kind of like a prequel as well. Julia Clark. But this yeah, time they come out, them, yeah, 2015 or something. Yeah. Terminator. Wait, Jennifer. so right, so does it go one to the Sarah Connor Chronicles? Even though like it doesn't that really one was affect. its own separate kind of that was kind of like its own separate story. It used oh, okay. to have a YouTube video yeah. out there that explains like. I what? tried watching them. They all had the same answers, and it was like, not the same answers. It was all different answers, and that's <laughs> why I'm asking live on the air right now. Because yeah. is it one of those open to your interpretation type deals? It kind of, yeah. it kind of is. Yeah, that's kinda pretty comes. much what it is. How you take it. I mean, like Man. me. So I, I like I like them, and that's the thing about me. I love Star Wars too. I just love too much stuff. I watch yeah. I watch too much TV. I used to get in trouble because my dad told me when I was growing up. I spent too much time in front of the TV and in front of movies. Dude, they would drop me off in the movie theater when I was like 10 years old. And I'd spend all day there jumping from one theater to another. Yeah. So that so when it comes to movies, that's why I'm so <laughs> geeky to all this stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Terminator, like I have a shirt that says I am the future. And it's basically the the okay. Terminator robot. Yeah. But that's yeah, cool. it's it's there's so much stuff, dude. Yeah. I, if you ask me, I can tell you from Doctor Who to Terminator to Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. David has a Doctor picture. Fan, yeah. yeah, David has a picture of me with uh, what's her name? Uh, Bo Katan. Um, Katie Sackhoff. Katie Sackhoff. Katie Sackhoff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's actually. I have an actual Viper. They only made like I think like five hundred of them or whatever, and I have her holding it. This was before nice. she became Bo Katan. But yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, is there any other big Star Wars news going on? Is that uh, right? I think that's pretty much it as far as the news no. goes. Well, no. Funko did release. There's a GameStop exclusive Boba Fett 18 inch that they're releasing, Whoa. but there's also a Chase figure 
in that size that they're releasing and it's the white prototype figure oh that's and, cool yeah so supposedly you of course you won't be able to tell which one you get because the packaging is sealed it's in a box so you won't know which one you get until it's open it doesn't say chase figure on the box or nothing so dang it, yeah it's one of those things <laughs> darn it <laughs> it's, yeah it's gonna be huh. they're gonna they're i think they're gonna be pretty expensive for people who want that mystery and are gonna yeah. chase that chase that chase figure i wonder if it's one and six like buying it off the website for the chase because like a pack of six come in a box and one of the six is a chase for from the distributor i don't know if that's how we'll do it with the the 18 inch because i mean the most most standard funkos i think are like 4.2 inches four inches something like that and yeah it's a it's a lot It'd be interesting man i'm actually yeah. tempted because they look they showed the pictures and i was like damn i don't have a boba fett i, mean, I don't have a real big 18 inch Funko Pop. Yeah. My wife has like three of them. She has really uh, the Target dog. She has the character from Harry Potter, the little the, he looks like uh an elf. Dobby. Dobby. Yeah. She has Dobby. Uh, she, she has she has baby Yoda, the real big one. That's so yeah, cool. she has quite a bit of stuff. I have that guy right there. Bobby oh, Frank. nice. Yeah, Babu. And then right there. God, this is confusing. <laughs> The Mandalorian, and I think yeah. over here you can't see it's Kylo Ren. So, oh, that's yeah, cool. I've got a lot of Funko Pops, and I'm not like a big fan of Funko Pops, but somehow they find their way to me. Dude, I feel that. I'm trying to quit though. <laughs> but dude, they they keep on releasing the good stuff, man. It's like I, I told my wife, uh, I'm like, oh, like it, well, you, you think, are okay, just no like more. the guy that stops drinking the milk. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I haven't put that stake in the ground yet, though. But I am <laughs> like the only Star Wars, I guess, collectible that I have signed by someone who's been in Star Wars as a Funko, and it's so satisfying. It's so cool. I can't wait to have more. That's what I'm planning on having Hayden sign when I meet him at SpaceCon this October as a Funko. Mm. But we'll see which so, one I pick. I'm a big Spidey Gwen fan, so when they came out with these, I had to freaking get one. Yeah, oh yeah. nice. No? It's like. So certain ones. I have my Tim Duncan one back there as well. I have my Kevin Smith one back there, the director's one. And actually, I have I purchased this one just because when she announced that she was doing Rogue Squadron, they came out with one for her as well. So I got her pop figure. Patty she Jenkins? Had, yeah. <laughs> a she Patty had, Jenkins pop? She, yeah, yeah, she actually has a pop. Wait, seriously? Yes. Oh dang, that's cool. So, and I got it just for that. That maybe one day I can meet her to have her sign it. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, man. <laughs> so I got a really man. cool like uh, it's a five pack of the Bad Batch, all with their helmets off. I'd love to have D. Bradley Baker sign that at some point. But I could go on and on about Funkos I want signed forever. So <laughs> that's just a rabbit hole for me, dude. It's 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 a it's a thing for everyone, man. Everybody's yeah. got some Funko one or another. Yeah, I got one on my desk at work for sure. <laughs> Robbing today, Michigan State Sparty. That's what I got. <laughs> nice. Go Spartans. Woo. Go green. Let's go. Go blue. <laughs> when did they play in the tournament, Ray? Come on. I don't know, man. What's the name left? I think they fired. Yeah, him he too. got he got canned, bro. Yeah. It sucks. He was a good coach That's too. All right, so does anyone have anything else they want to bring up, bring to the table here? No. Man, go see The Phantom Menace at least on May 4, guys. Let's let's make this uh, some sort of tradition that a Star Wars movie of some sort comes back to the theater on May 4. Like, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think, I mean, I, I'm just going to say this right now. I know that they're probably going to be bringing out Revenge of the Sith uh, for like a special screening for next year because next year marks the 20th yeah. anniversary of Revenge of the oh, Sith. So that's it awesome. just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. So yeah. I'm just throwing this out there. Let's do something. Let's do another giveaway for May 4th. For anyone who goes in, what well, no. So anyone who goes and sees the movie, I still have two Ahsoka prints. Um, okay. We haven't given away. And if they take a picture in front of the poster and then put hashtag for Instagram, Star Wars Stuff Pod. Yeah. And then like the page. And then we'll pick a winner to give away two of the prints. 
Okay. Um, we are currently doing a big one for the re, uh, for the series finale of the Bad Batch. I'm not going to yeah. say it, w- say what it is just yet, but um, it's very two cool collectible items um, that you can't get in stores. I'm just going to leave it at that. But yeah, yes, yeah. it's, very, it's exciting. Very cool. Yeah. But then also don't forget, Colin, aren't you going to make the announcement of who's coming on the podcast next week? I uh, I actually did that the the last episode, but I can do it again. Um, uh, next week, March twenty seventh, we're gonna have Daniel Roebuck, who played the wonderful character Grease from Jedi Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order, and he's been in other some amazing projects. Um, but he will be on the podcast live, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come and join us. Talk to this great legend of a character uh, and actor. And yeah, excited for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah and awesome. he's done a whole lot of other stuff too in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Grandpa Absolutely. Monster, Lost. Absolutely. Yeah. He's actually airing. He's on two episodes that just came on nine one one that aired uh, last week, and in this week episode, he's a character in that big episode, two part episode. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, yeah, and then if you wanted to hear another great person that we talked to uh we had vanessa marshall on the podcast uh, a, a couple of weeks ago and you can find that episode on youtube spotify and yeah. apple Podcasts. so go and check that out because that was a that was very a fun, fun but emotional interview for in certain spots um and yeah you really see how much she loves star wars so go and check out the interview it's fantastic yeah, she's yeah. really a lot like us more than I thought she was. She was, oh yeah, yeah dude, hardcore, yeah, very fan. much like one of us. Hardcore, it, absolutely. It was cool to discover that. Oh. All right, and yeah, before we go, I definitely want to thank all of our awesome supporters on Patreon: Hayden Hazard, Darth Ace One, Liam McCowan, Chris Simpson, Kevin Leininger, Dev McCaffrey, Drew Peters, Zach Netzel, Fenrir Five Two Six. Maya Morris and Makatao Tala. Thank you for all that love and support you've been giving us for years and years and years. And it helps us so much with daily costs for the podcast, supporting the podcast, hosting the podcast, buying merch, figuring out plans for, for future events and doing giveaways like, like Ray mentioned. So thank you so much for that. And don't forget to hit like on the video, uh, comment on the video on YouTube. That always helps. Uh, also, if you're on Patreon, uh, hit the like button there. We're also on Instagram, like we mentioned earlier, at Star Wars Stuff Pod. It's a new handle there, at Star Wars Stuff Pod. We're also on X Twitter, at Stuff Pod. We're on Threads, Star Wars Stuff Podcast. Uh, we're also on TikTok. You can email the show at Star Wars Stuff Podcast at gmail.com. If you have any questions, anything you want to address. Uh, also on Facebook, of course, a lot of people watch us there on our Facebook group, and we have a page. And that is pretty much it. And for Zach, Colin, and Ray, my name is David. May the force be with you. Always. Always. We need a Max Rebo series. I'm telling you what. Like, I just think that would be fantastic. Maybe a toy. <laughs>